Hello, I'm Kate James. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee, also known as the RSC. Right now I am sitting at home because of the novel coronavirus, so I thought I would record some YouTube videos on using the new RDA toolkit. This one is about searching. If you like this one, please check out the ones I've done on exact title searches, glossary searches, and save searches. I need to be logged into the RDA toolkit in order to search. I can tell that I'm logged in because it says welcome back Kate and my name appears up here. Underneath my name is the search box. Notice that there's a magnifying glass here. I can either type in a search term and uh, click on the magnifying glass or I can hit enter. Next to the search box there's a drop down menu. If I double click on it I can see the types of searches I can do. The first one is an all search. This searches everything in the RDA toolkit. It's available for you to look at except AACR2. AACR2 is not available to search in any way. In the new toolkit you can view it in resources but it's not searchable. Sorry. So all searches RDA itself, policy statements, and any contributed documents that you have access to. I'll explain what contributed documents are in a moment if you don't know what those are. RDA only searches just RDA itself. So all of the entities and their elements, all of the guidance sections, it does not search policies, and it searches the top two sections of resources because those are considered part of RDA itself. So glossary through relationship matrix, that's the first section. Abbreviations and symbols through terms of ranks, that's the second section. These are considered part of RDA. Now this next section, revision history, books of the Bible, and terms for medium of performance is not considered part of RDA, so it's not searchable through an RDA only search. If you need to search that content, you can do an all search for that. As I said before, AACR2 is not searchable, so unsurprisingly, an RDA only search does not search that. Policies would search all of the policy statements available in the toolkit. Right now, um, there's no real policy statements, so it's not a very useful search at the moment, but it will be in the future. You may have noticed in views you can set a primary policy statement. For example, I could set the BLPSs to be my primary policy statements. That setting doesn't have any effect on the policy search, which just searches all policy statements that have hits for whatever my search term is. Then I have to narrow it down by um, agency policy statements. Exact title search works a bit differently than the other types of searches because those are keyword based and exact title search is a left anchored search. This is useful if I know the name of the page that I want to look at. Uh, for example, I know that there's an element page for date of publication. So if I just type that in the search box and hit enter, it would take me directly to that page rather than uh, going through the search results. Glossary searches the glossary and contributed documents will search the documents up here. Um, so for example, you could create a workflow for yourself on cataloging serials and then it would be searchable through the contributed document search and the all search. Save searches, if you have any, they'll be listed underneath the save searches. I don't have any so there's nothing listed here. Now I'd like to tell you uh, a few tips on searching the RDA toolkit that are applicable to all of the search types except for exact title. Remember I said works differently because it's left anchored. So generally Boolean operators are not used which means putting an and or an or in is not going to impact your search results. You can use quotation marks um, to find a phrase or if you just type in a phrase without quotation marks it'll assume an and between them. So let me show you.
if I search creator agent, it'll find sometimes where it appears together as a phrase, and then it also, when they both words appear in the same area, although not next to each other, but as you may have noticed, it remembers what I've searched before in the toolkit, so just pretend that you don't see anything um, being suggested, and I've just typed this in. So creator agent of work finds everywhere that that's a phrase when it's in quotation marks. Notice that's still a lot of hits. Let's say I just want to know um, what this element is, so I want to look at the glossary definition for it, but I didn't use the glossary search. So now I can narrow this down. So now I'm just looking at the glossary um, definitions where the phrase creator agent of work appears. And yeah, it does this sometimes. Um, sometimes it stays on the page and sometimes it scrolls up a little bit past and so you have to scroll back down. Anyway, here it is. Um, notice that it's highlighted because this is what I was searching for and this is the definition for the element. Now, let me do another search, an exact title search for that same element and let's see what happens. Notice this time I'm not using quotation marks because it's left anchored, so it would actually try to search the quotation marks and it won't work. It takes me directly to that page because I had the exact title of the element name. Now, if you search for something that doesn't have an exact title, it will just default to an all search. So let me try. There's no element in RDA called Creator Work Agent. So it doesn't find a page with that, but it defaults to an all search and finds where those words appear in parts of RDA. Another thing that is useful for searching are wildcards. You can use an asterisk to search um, for some, like, let's say the first um, part of a word, like, I'll do, here this, color, this replace, the asterisk replaces multiple characters, so I'm going to find colorist, um, if I do more results, this is all still colorist, it's a long, but here we go, um, color, uh, color, if, if I keep going, you'll see cola typer, colon, and maybe some other things, but I'm not going to show you all those results because there's four pages. Just trust me, and you can do the search yourself. So the asterisk replaced multiple characters. Pretend I didn't just search for that, and so I don't know whether color is spelled with a U, like the British spelling, or without a U, like the American spelling then I can use a percentage sign for a single character. So like this, C-O-L-O -O percentage sign R, do a search and I see, oh, it's spelled with a U. Notice now I'm not getting colorist and colotyper, all of those others, because the percentage sign is just replacing one character. I can use these two wildcard characters at the end of a word or in the middle of a word. They don't work at the beginning of a word. Also, uh, a question mark is sometimes a wildcard character with different search engines, but not in the RDA toolkit, so don't use a question mark. Another cool thing about searching in the RDA toolkit is being able to find new elements that have been renamed if you remember the name of the old element. For example, I know that there used to be an element called type of jurisdiction. I can't remember what it's called now, so I can just do an all search for type of jurisdiction. Here we go. Based on these search results, 
I see that it seems to be now called category of government because it says use for type of jurisdiction under category of government. If I go to this page, here's the element. In the element reference, it has type of jurisdiction as an alternate label. So that's how I can still access the elements under their old names. Notice how there is a mark mapping available for this element. Now you can also search by mark tags if that element has been mapped in the toolkit. Um, the mappings are not complete, so it's possible that you might have an RDA element that has a mark mapping. It's just not in there yet. Here's an example, 260 subfield C. Notice here, uh, I did not put any space in between the um, 260 and the dollar sign for the subfield. I get four hits. Um, all of these are different types of um, date of manifestation elements, which is unsurprising. So that is useful if you don't know the name of the element, but you think you know the mark tag and it has been mapped. Now, it's OK if I did put a space um, here. Sometimes it makes a difference. Sometimes it doesn't. So. Here, it did not make a difference, as I'll show you. Now it has a space. Um, let me give you an example where it did make a difference for a space. So um, in Mark, um, the 100 tag with first indicator 3 is for name of family. Um, actually, I think it might be called family name in Mark, but anyway. So I know that that's been mapped in RDA. So I'm going to type in 100 space 3 for that first indicator and search. So I get a lot of hits, um, obviously, related to family of work. A family is a type of collective agent, so that's why it's been mapped to this element. So anyway, there's another page of that. Now let's see what happens if I just type in 1003 so there's no space between the 100 and the 3. Okay, so I still get a good amount of hits but now nothing is related to family. Um, these are notation numbers for RDA vocabulary terms so that's why you're getting hits here. There are no hits um, related to family names so having that space made a big difference. And I'll just show you the rest of the search results. As you can see, all kinds of vocabulary terms, but no family names. So, um, you know, if you want to be safe, you might want to just automatically add that space in. The last thing that I want to mention about searching is that citation numbers are uh, searchable in the toolkit. Uh, I know that there's a video on citation numbers, so I'm not going to really discuss those. I don't have any memorized, so I will uh, find an element um, page to get a citation number off of, just to demonstrate this. OK, so. I'm going to copy the citation number. Now let me just go to something totally different so we can see how that worked. Do an all search. The citation number. So as you can see, it brought up the exact um, section in Creator Person of Work that I got the citation number for. Uh, so if somebody emails you a citation number, you can just paste it into the search box. Although, I hope that if they're um, emailing you about a part of the RDA toolkit, they'll just email you the URL. But in case they don't, now you can search that citation number. Thank you for watching, and I hope that you check out the other videos I've done about searching. Bye!